Chapter 31 to 36. Getting out of the space pod, I start walking around the rundown base. While walking around, I notice that the warp hangar and everywhere else is rusted away, like no one has given maintenance to this place in decades. Sage I've walked around the entire base twice and haven't come across anybody. They must have either abandoned the base or have been killed. Walking back to the space pod I was about to get in when I remembered something important. Sage I can't survive in space like the frost demons, and going to their home planet without being about to do that would be suicide. Almost getting myself killed, I walk over to the warp control station and try to figure out how to use this correctly. After messing around with it for probably half an hour I can say that controlling this is pretty easy. You just select the sector, then the base, and then a timer will appear asking how long you would like to wait before activating the warp device. I went to the space pod to check the galactic map that Nala managed to get. Sage I'm lucky Nala downloaded the map onto the space pod or that would be awkward warping back to the H.Q to ask for the map. Checking the map for Namek, I realize I have no idea where it's at, and looking for a single planet in the galaxy is going to be impossible. Sage stupid. All I need to do is search or ask it. Sage dash find planet Namek. Planet Namek found, sector 36. Inputting sector 36 into the warp control, I set the timer for one minute. Hurrying back to the space pod, I get inside and a minute later I am hit with that nauseous feeling again, but this time I'm prepared. After the warping is done I look through the glass and see some people walking around in the warp hangar. Seeing this I quickly set the destination to Namek on the space pod, before people try to interact with me. Feeling the space pod start to float out of the hangar, it passes through some water-like substance and is now in the vacuum of space. Shooting off faster than it has ever done before, I check the time of arrival for Namek. Destination Namek, arrival one week. Seeing the time, I press a button and gas starts filling the space pod, which makes me go to sleep until I land on Namek. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. On a big beautiful green planet called Namek, it is housed by the race called Namekians. They are known for their magic and amazing healing capabilities. In a big stone house atop a rock, there sits a big Namekian who is referred to as Grand Elder Guru, and standing across from him is Nail, the strongest warrior of the Namekians. Guru dash Nail go and greet our guest who has just arrived. Nail dash yes Grand Elder. Walking out of Grand Elder's house I fly towards the massive power I sense. While I'm flying I notice that the person is flying closer and at incredible speed, not even a minute later I'm floating face to face with the being releasing such key. Nail he is not even an adult, and to have such power is incredible. Nail, dash, my name is Nail, and if you do not mind the Grand Elder would like to see you. Sage, dash, that is why I came here in the first place so let's go. Calming down, I realized how much stress has been piling up from him being on our planet, without even having the power to stop him. Turning around, I start flying towards Grand Elder's house. A minute later, we are standing right outside of the house, turning towards him I give instructions. Nail, dash Grand Elder is just inside, and he is waiting for you. I shall wait outside. Sage, dash him, I know. I can sense his key. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Walking inside the weird stone building, I arrive where Guru always stays sitting on his chair. Looking at him I must say, he is far bigger than you think from what the show displayed. Sage how, can an Amikian even get so big, it makes no sense. Guru dash hello little one, please tell me why someone of your caliber has come to our little planet. Sage dash I've come to make a wish using the dragon balls. Looking at his super wrinkly face I see a surprised expression form. Making me confused, because why would anyone come to Namek other than the dragon balls? Sage dash why do you seem surprised? That's the only reason why trouble comes for you in the future. This time he is even more surprised than last time. I had to give him a minute to calm down before he went into cardiac arrest. Guru dash to think you know that our home will be in danger in the future. May I ask for information if you have any? Thinking about whether to tell him, I decide to. Now the reason why is because even if I inform him, the Namekians don't have the power to change anything before the Frisia force arrives, and even if they tell the Z fighters it won't be of much help in the grand scheme of things. Sage, dash, well someone powerful will get word of the Dragon Balls, capable of granting any wish, and they will come to wish for immortality. Guru, dash, thank you for the information, this will be helpful. Sage, dash, so can I use your Dragon Balls or not? Guru, dash, of course. Nail. Nail walks in from behind me and stops right next to me. 
Guru Dash, bring the Dragon Balls, our little friend here would like to make a wish. Nail seems surprised knowing that I came for the Dragon Balls. Bowing to Guru he leaves the house. About one hour later I and Nail are standing outside of Guru's house, with seven Dragon Balls laying on the ground in front of us. Nail walks forward and recites the password for the Dragon Balls. Nail, Dash, Takra, Poop, Pop, Purunga, Pupir, Paro. After saying that giant light shoots out in a circle from the Dragon Balls into the sky, and the sky darkens with clouds. Coming out of the golden light is a huge dragon with muscular arms, two horns coming out of his shoulder, another two horns coming out of his ear, and the last two horns curving backward from the top of his head. Paranga dash to who has summoned me I shall grant the three wishes. Speak now. Turning to Nail I, I tell him my wish. Sage dash tell him I would like the ability to survive in the vacuum of space. He nods at me and then starts speaking to Paranga in the Namikian language. Nail, dash, I wish he is capable of surviving in the vacuum of space, dot. When he finished speaking Paranga's eyes glowed for a second before light enveloped me and then disappeared quickly. Checking around I didn't feel any different, but that's for later I have something more important to wish for. Sage now that's done, I can wish for my parents' resurrection. Wanting to see my parents again, I ask Nail to wish for my parents to be resurrected right here on Namek. I got to be careful of wording my wish or Paranga might resurrect my parents in the same place they died. Nail, dash, I wish for this child's parents to be resurrected on Namek. Eager to see my parents again, I wait for Paranga's eyes to flash. But his eyes never flash and instead, he speaks. Paranga, dash, that is not possible, as I cannot force someone more powerful than myself against their will. Confused why my parents wouldn't want to get wished back to life, I ask Nail to wish for me and my parents to telepathically speak to each other. Nail, dash, I wish for the child and his parents to be able to speak with each other. Paranga's eyes shine this time, and before I can say anything I hear my parents' voice inside my head. Oh on this is what happens when you try to fight everyone, you almost got us killed, and we're already dead. Zuxi well I wouldn't have gotten distracted if some loud voice sounded in my head twice. Onan Yuri not the only one who heard voices inside their head, but you didn't see me get distracted. Happy to hear my parents' voice again, I try speaking to them telepathically. Sage mother, father. Can you hear me? Onan did you hear that Zuxi, this time it sounded like Sage. Zuxi yeah I did, but how could we have heard Sage? We are dead, would that mean he died too? Sage ha ha ha, it's me, Sage, and no mother I didn't die, how could I ever be killed? Zuxi it's Sage. How have you been? Sage I've been fine, sadly, I haven't had any fun fights since I battled King Ice. But me and Nala have explored a lot, and been to many different planets. Onan doesn't sound so bad, and to think you and Nala are still together, it seems you do like her. Sage and no I don't, she is an annoyance to be around. She only talks about lame runes and history, anyways, forget about her, what I want to know is why don't you two want to be resurrected? Zuxi brought back to life? Why would I want that, this place is the best place ever. No rules, no missions, just fighting every day, and I love it. Onan your mother does have a point, not having to worry about missions, and you can fight anybody whenever you want. The only downside is since we are dead there is no food since we don't need to eat. Sage but there are also strong people who aren't dead that you could fight. Onan of course we know that, the universe is so big, how could there not be someone stronger? But we don't wish to burden you with us being so weak. Zuxi although I hate to admit it we can't compare to you Sage, we want to experience thrilling battles without having to drag you down. Don't forget we are proud scions as well. Sage so you don't want to be brought back to life? Zuxi nope. Oh no, no I'll just stay here, it's not so bad. Sighing that they don't want to be brought back to life, and it's not like I can force them to. Ending the conversation because I have a wish granting dragon summon still. Sage mother, father I have to go, I'll make sure to visit one day. Oh not okay son, just make sure I don't see you down here too soon. Zuxi see a sage. Ha ha ha, Onan, they have come back for revenge, and they have more people. Cutting off the connection, I opened my eyes seeing nothing change. Realizing I have only a single wish left, I start to think about anything I can wish for that may be useful to me. Sage I don't need a gravity chamber, I have Nala's runes for that. I refuse to ask for more strength or immortality, because I don't need it, and my pride won't accept power not gained through my own efforts. Not being able to think of any wish I might need now or in the future, I was about to just leave when I was suddenly hit with a genius idea. I hurriedly turned to ask Nail my last wish. 
Sage, dash, I wish to have a compass that will point in the direction of the holder's greatest desire. Nail, dash, the boy wishes to have a compass that will point in the direction of the holder's greatest desire. Paranga's eyes shine brightly, seeing that I hold out my hand, and a second later a compass appears in my hand. Bringing it closer, I inspect it, and I notice it looks similar to a log pose, except it looks far steadier. Paranga, dash, three wishes have granted, I shall return to slumber. And with that, the dragon balls start spinning in the air really fast. Sage not today. But before they could disperse, I fly up and catch them. Floating back down I hand them over to Nail, who seems slightly thankful. Flying back to my space pod say, I one last thing to Nail. Sage, dash, give Guru my thanks. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Back at the Galactic Patrol base, I land my space pod in the warp hangar, and before anyone tries to stop me, I flash in front of the warp control station and click the death base. That's what they call the sector where the Frost Demon's home plant resides aka Planet Geyser. Flashing back to my space pod, I get it and watch several patrolmen try to stop me from warping. But they're too late, seconds later I'm in the rundown base from before. Not even bothering to look around I inputted the coordinates for Planet Geyser, when I remember that the galactic patrolmen haven't been able to find its location. The only reason they think their home base is in this sector is the high number of frost demons they have encountered here. Sage Ha, let's just fly around randomly and hope I encounter a frost demon, and if that doesn't work I'll just land on a planet ruled by a frost demon. Flying out of the base, I input some random coordinates and go to sleep hoping I am lucky enough to find a frost demon. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. In the middle of space, there is a spaceship that the Frost Demon race is known to use. Inside the bridge, a conversation is going on with two people. Gam dash Lord Snow, we have found a spaceship of the model kind that the Frisia Force uses on our scanners. What are your orders? Lord dash capture it and bring me whoever is inside it, I can get information about Frisia when I'm torturing it. Gam, dash, yes Lord Snow, it will be done right away. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Warning, 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 warning. Waking up from the constant blaring happening right in my ear, I turn off the alarm and look through the window. Looking outside, I see a giant spaceship of the Frost Demon race currently using a tractor beam on my space pod. Sage lets kill the captain quickly before he destroys the spaceship in an attempt to kill me. After waiting a while, my space pod has finally been brought aboard the spaceship. Opening the hatch, I am met with several soldiers pointing weapons at me. Not even bothering them, I ignore their yelling and start walking past them. They started firing at me when I didn't listen to them, I was about to launch a key blast at them when I stopped. Sage I might blow the spaceship up, physical attack, it is then. Flashing behind one of them I stab my hand through their chest, pulling my hand out I flash around and do the same to the rest of the soldiers. Walking towards the highest key I sensed on the spaceship, I killed any soldiers that tried to stop me and ignored everyone else. A while later, I'm standing in front of a frost demon, who I assume is the leader or captain of the spaceship. Snow, dash, ho ho ho, to think you were this strong, I was going to torture you, but how ab, dash. I flashed behind him and sliced his head clean off, it was so swift that he didn't even realize what happened. Walking to the control station I looked around the map until I found a shiny light blue sphere with the name Planet Geyser. Clicking on it, I fiddle around in the controls for a little bit longer and now I am flying straight to Planet Geyser. Destination Planet Geyser, time to arrival, 2 weeks, 3 days, 6 hours. Sage so that's Planet Geyser? Standing on top of the spaceship that's parked on a moon close to the planet, I'm looking at the Frost Demon's home planet. From here, I can't see much detail about the planet, but one thing I can tell you is that it's going to be very cold. Sage there are no life forms on the planet that have power similar to my normal strength. But most of them are probably in their first or second form. Let's make a flashy entrance. Flying to the planet from the moon, I start speeding up as fast as I can. Several minutes later, I have just entered the planet's atmosphere, and I'm on fire, just like a meteor. Aiming for the area with the most key signatures, I fly in that direction. Setting eyes on the city, I can't see much because of all the fire that's covering my body. Sage I hope these weaklings give me some entertainment before the true fight. Landing right in the middle of the city, I hit the ground with such force that I didn't stop for a good few seconds. Standing up and dusting myself off, I look up and estimate how far I have gone into the ground. Sage that looks about 25 to 28 meters, I could have done better. Flying out of the hole, I come up to ground level, and the first thing I see is smoke everywhere. 
I also seem to have killed a few on my entrance alone, they were weaklings anyway. Waving my hand to clear the smoke, I can finally get a view of the destruction to the city I had caused. Looking around I notice there is nothing within close proximity of my landing site, but farther away there are destroyed buildings, and I can sense several key signatures coming in my direction. About a minute later, all the key signatures I sensed earlier are standing right in front of me. Counting them, there are about nine of them. Sage, dash, took you guys long enough. FD.1, dash, you have interrupted my sleep, for that, you will pay. After he said that he shot a key beam at me, which hit my body, and I didn't even feel it. FD.1 looked confused for a second before he fired another beam, which did nothing again. Annoyed at his weak attack, I fired a key beam back, and it pierced straight through his head. After that attack the other frost demons looked kinda intimidated, seeing that, I mocked them some more so they would transform. Sage, dash, to think you guys are so weak, not even a challenge. FD.2 dash enough. Let me dispose of this bug. Saying that he started transforming into the second form, which took way too long to be useful in an actual fight. Finally transformed, FD.2 has his arrogance back, walking towards me, he stops right in front of me. He is at least twice my height, which sadly is still the same height of 5 inch 4 foot. Annoyed at how tall he is I raise my hand to catch the punch he threw at me, and rip his arm off. FD.2 dash ah. Hearing his loud screaming annoyed me even more, throwing his arm away, I raised my hand and launched a key wave at him. A few seconds later, I stop the attack and there is nothing left of his body. Smirking, I look at the other FDs and ask them to show their true power. Sage, dash, let's stop wasting time, just transform into your true form so I can have some fun. With that, they all start transforming into their true forms, which causes the ground to start shaking from the amount of power. About half minute later, the seven remaining FDs are finally standing in their true forms, which are practically identical to Frisia's, but some of them just have a different color. Seeing them finally take me seriously, I smile before rushing straight into them, catching them off guard. Grabbing one of their heads I slammed it to the ground, and using my other hand I fired a key blast at another one. Dodging a kick from behind, I ducked before turning around and kicking the FD back. Blocking a key blast from behind, I return a few of my own key blasts. Grabbing the FD that I slammed into the ground, I grabbed his tail and started using his body as a bat. Letting go of the FD I was using as a bat, I fired a galactic burst at him. After killing him, I take a punch to the face, which did no damage whatsoever, smirking I look at the culprit and grab his arm. Seeing him stuck, he starts punching and kicking me trying to get away, but it's all useless. Smiling, I open my mouth and launch a key wave right at his face. Closing my mouth I look at the headless corpse, before throwing it away. Looking at the remaining five FDs, I can see the fear in their eyes, laughing I flash behind another one and I rip his tail off. Sage I wonder if frost demon meat tastes good? Wanting to test my thought, I take a bite of the tail in my hand and chew it. Sage better than I thought, but it's too cold. Next time I should cook it instead. Throwing away the tail, I start the fighting again. We have been fighting for a few minutes now, and I have sensed other key signatures from all over the planet coming in my direction. Sage that's good these guys were too weak to even give me a warm-up. Blocking a kick, I grab the leg and stab my hand into his chest, grabbing his heart, I rip it out, before crushing it. Letting go of the dying FD, I turn around and look at the remaining four. Looking at them I can sense hesitation and fear emanating from them, disappointed I hurry and kill them before they start trying to flee, which would be highly annoying. Looking at the result of our fight, all I see are craters, broken limbs, and the dead bodies of my enemies. Walking back to the center of what used to be the city, I sit down and wait for the reinforcements to arrive. Several minutes later, I can see hundreds upon hundreds of frost demons in the distance. Smiling, I wait for them to land closer before introducing myself. One of the strongest I sensed walks closer to me and asks about me. Lord Hale, dash for someone to be stupid enough to attack our home base, I would like to know your name before you die. Standing up, I walk closer to Hale, or at least that's what the other frost demons called him. Standing right in front of him I can tell he is in his second form. Sage's power is about one fifteenth of mine and he is only in his second form, I can't wait to fight this guy. Sage, dash I am the scion named Sage, and I have come here to slaughter the frost demons. Somewhere in the void of space, there is a spaceship resembling the models owned by the frost demon race. Inside the bridge of the spaceship sitting in the captain's seat is a frost demon, who is presumably in his second transformation. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. 
Hearing knocking coming from the door, I press a button on my chair that opens the door. Cold dash tell what was so important that you had to come personally? Turning my chair around, I spot Fisher looking more nervous than he usually does in my presence. Curious, I ask him about it. Cold dash tell me, what type of information did we receive? Fisher dash caking cold, I think showing you will be best. If I may? Intrigued, I nod my head at his request. Turning my chair back around, I watch Fisher walk to the communication controls before bringing up a video and playing it. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Lord Snow dash caking cold, this is Snow, I am currently on our home planet. A and we have been invaded, we have tried defeating the intruder, but we have lost. Please come save us, before we all, dash. Watching one of my subjects, that I rule get beheaded, before my eyes angered me. As I continue watching the video, the camera angle changes, to what looks like a scion, but of young age. Sage, dash hey cold, you should be watching this, I'm at your home base, killing your people. So hurry up and return, and don't worry I will wait for you. Ha 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 ha. After he finished talking, the boy moved out of the way allowing me to lay my eyes upon piles of frost demon corpses. Seeing this infuriated me to no end, almost making me destroy the spaceship. After a few minutes, I calmed down. Looking over to Fisher, I asked him for more details about the video. Cold dash Fisher, when did we receive this video? Fisher dash W we received T transmission of the video 10 m minutes ago, King Cold. Looking back at the video, I stare at the Scion boy with anger. Deciding to return to home base and kill him, I order Fisher. Cold dash inform Frisia that I will be returning to home base for a while and set the destination to Planet Geyser. Fisher dash why yes King Cold. And with my orders Fisher leaves me alone, sitting by myself, I start pondering on how I should torture that Scion when I reach Planet Geyser. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Sage dash that was a great battle, even though most of them were cannon fodder. But there were a few of them that were tough, especially that snow guy, he was almost as strong as me. Looking down, I inspect how much damage my body has received. Sage while fighting those guys were fun, I am quite injured, but that's good, I will get a Zenkai boost after healing. Note, he did not use Akari during the battle. Done eating some random frost demon that I cooked and I must say it was quite tasty, I will definitely try it again. Walking over to a relatively clean spot I lay down and go to sleep, waiting for the day to fight King Cold. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. While meditating I suddenly sense a powerful key far away from the planet, but with each passing minute I can sense it getting closer and closer, smiling, I continue meditating. Seiji has finally arrived, it has only taken him about one month. But that's fine, because of the long wait I have managed to gain proper control over my strength. Several hours later, I stop meditating because I can sense that he is about to land on the planet, and close to me as well. Stretching, I do some light warm-ups and only stop when I see his spaceship land about 100 meters away from me. Looking at the spaceship I see the doors open and walking out is the one and only king of the frost demons, King Cold. Flying closer to him, I land only a few meters in front of him and I notice he is already in his third form, looking disgusting as well. Sage's power is on par with mine currently, fighting him will be a wonderful battle. Sage, dash, someone's already in their third form, it seems I got someone scared. Trying to make him angry, I notice it has little effect, ignoring my failed attempt, I get into a fighting position waiting for someone to make a move. Cold raises his hand and following that the spaceship closes its door before flying away. Cold, dash, I will take my time with killing you. After he said that he flashed right in front of me and threw a punch at me, seeing that I punched at him as well making our fists collide. Smiling, we continue throwing punches at each other, with neither of us getting pushed back. The impact from our fists caused the ground around us to crack all over, looking at Cold I can see he seems surprised that my power is equal to his. Flashing behind Cold I launch a plasma stream at his back, he had enough time to turn around and block the attack, but I pushed him away with it. Flashing in front of him I kick his giant head, but he retaliated with a key blast, which I managed to block. Backing away, Cold rushed me again throwing punches and kicks, I dodge and block his attack while counter-attacking when I can. About to attack him when my instincts warn me about danger from behind, flashing away, I look back and notice his tail managed to circle behind me. He attacked me with a key beam from the tip of his tail, but it took too long to charge. Sage, dash I must say Cold while you are quite powerful. You probably haven't been in many fights now have you? 
Seeing him charge me while ignoring my question we continue fighting, and for several minutes I managed to gain the upper hand during the battle, but it was not by much. Cold has been improving during our battle, it is very slight, but he nonetheless has improved. Pushing each other away, me and Cold both have bruises and slight injuries, but while I am still in good shape, Cold seems a little exhausted. Smiling, I fold my arms and talk to Cold. Sage, dash let's get to the main event, hurry up and show your true form. If you continue like this, you will lose, and you know it. Cold hearing me talk, seems a little pissed, before he smirks and replies. Cold dash so be it, but do know that this decision of yours will be your downfall boy. Aha. And with that, he releases his final seal, showing his true form. The amount of power he is releasing is shaking the entire planet, smiling, I can feel my heart beating in excitement from the battle that is about to happen. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. On a beautiful planet far far away from where one of the most dangerous battles is taking place. There is currently a tall red man in nice clothes with long white hair wearing pot era earrings on each ear, standing behind a small man. The small man is wearing similar clothes as well but his skin is light purple and he has white hair in a mohawk style. The small man is currently sitting down with his eyes closed when suddenly he opens his eyes in surprise. Shin dash such powerful key, who is fighting such a monster. Come on Kibito let us see what is happening. Kibito dash yes, Kaishin. And with that, both Shin and Kibito vanish from where they stood. Underscore underscore. Underscore underscore. Sage's new power level, dash, 580M. Seeing Cold's true form, he looked like an exact copy of Frisia, but he was just larger. Feeling the power come off him, I can confidently say that his power is equal to mine and all his injuries have been healed. Cold dash ah ha ha ha. Now I shall let you know true despair you pathetic scion. Sage dash your funny cold, but did you think what I showed you was all of my power? Let me show you true strength. And with that sentence, I started powering up to full power. At full strength, I then used Akari, and my already chiseled body grew with height and muscle mass. My hair spiked up making it look like SSJ2 Gohan, smirking I turned to face cold while arcs of lighting traveled across our bodies from the amount of power we were releasing. Sage, dash, come on cold, let's start round two. And with my provocation, we both charge at each other at full speed. The moment we slammed into each other, we unleashed thousands of attacks every second. The shockwaves from our attacks were slowly destroying the planet, causing giant cracks that spanned hundreds of kilometers to form on the ground. Blocking a punch, I kicked at his left side which he dodged, firing key blasts at him, he evades them all while flying at me. Punching his face, he uses his tail to grab my foot and he swings me around throwing me into the planet while several key blasts follows right behind me. Blocking the key attacks, I was about to charge at him when I noticed him waiting for me in the open. Smirking, I decided to copy what Goku did with Frieza, creating a key orb I shoot it to the left of the smoke cloud while I exit through the right. Seeing Cold take the bait, I flash behind him and unleash a plasma stream. Cold not having enough time to dodge takes my attack, pushing him far away. Stopping the attack, I was about to charge at him when I whipped my head to the left looking straight at nothing. Sage my instincts are telling me I'm being watched, but I can't find the culprit, TSK, coward. Ignoring the creeps watching me, I continue fighting with Cold who has gotten back up. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Currently, I am watching the King of Frost Demons, King Cold and a young Scion boy by the name of Sage. Seeing them release such power, astonishes me, considering they are so young and they are far stronger than me. Note, Shin is a couple of million years old. Shin the amount of power I am sensing from them is the highest I have sensed since Mage and Buu attacked us Kai's. Shin dash the amount of power they are releasing is enormous, wouldn't you agree Kibito? Kibito dash yes, Kai Shin. But they are still mortals. Watching the Scion Child trick King Cold and attack from the back, I was about to comment when suddenly the boy looked straight at us. I got surprised, thinking he somehow found us hiding in the void. Shin there is no way he found us hiding. Staring at him I saw his facial expression have a look of annoyance before he continued his battle with King Cold. Calming down, I realize I am sweating and my heartbeat is erratic. Shin to think I got scared of such a young boy. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Me and Cold have been fighting for a while, the planet is constantly spewing lava, and it looks like it's on the verge of destruction. I am slightly exhausted and I have injuries all over my body, but luckily none of them are serious. Cold on the other hand is in the same shape as me, but he is constantly gasping for breath. 
Sage this is what happens when you don't train, what a fool. Sage, dash is this really all you have keen cold? And weren't you supposed to be the strongest in the universe? Mocking him, I see his face morphs into anger, before he starts laughing maniacally. He raises his arm into the air and powers up a huge key orb, before launching it to the planet. Cold dash your strong scion, but tell me what can you do when there is no planet for you to breathe on? Ha 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 ha. While laughing he flies up into the sky, leaving the atmosphere of the soon-to-be-destroyed planet. Smiling, I follow right behind him, several seconds later, we are both standing in the vacuum of space. With the planet exploding behind us, and hundreds of rock chunks flying in every direction. Smirking, I see Cold's confident face slowly start morphing into anger, before he powers back again and charges at me again. We constantly attack each other while evading the rocks from hitting us. Slamming him into a rock, I flash away leaving a galactic burst for him, exploding the entire rock as well. Coming out of the explosion Cold fires key beams from every finger, deflecting the key beams I slowly made my way closer to him. Cold seeing that his attacks were ineffective stopped before grabbing a giant rock and throwing it at me. Seeing the rock coming my way, I put my hands forward and charged straight through the rock. Coming out the other side I see Cold right in front of me, surprised that I am right in front of him, I grab his shoulders and headbutt him, causing him to bleed from his head. Opening my mouth I attack him with a fire breath, while I'm attacking him, Cold uses his tail and wraps it around my neck and starts squeezing hard, forcing me to stop my attack. Cold knees me in the stomach making me cough, letting go of his shoulders I pull his tail up to my mouth, before biting it. Forcing Cold to let go of me, looking at Cold's face I see it's covered in burn marks. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. We have been fighting for a long time, and both of us are seriously injured and tried. Looking at Cold, who is having trouble fighting, I decide now is a good time to finish this fight. Sage this was a wonderful battle, but it seems like he is nearing his end. Getting into stance, I start charging up the strongest plasma stream I have used to this day. Cold seeing me starts charging up his own attack above his head, resulting in an attack similar to Frisia's supernova, but much stronger. Several seconds later, we have both finished charging up our attacks, looking at each other we unleash our attack to finish this battle. Sage dash plasma stream. Cold dash supernova. Our attacks collide against each other, causing all the space debris around us to get pulverized and the farther pushed back. Slowly but surely my attack is pushing his back, Cold seeing as he is losing ground aims his tail at me and fires a key beam. Sage to think you were so pathetic, I thought about letting you live after you lost, but never mind. Not being able to move, I take the key beam straight to the face making me lose ground. Cold seeing the sneak attack work, puts all the strength he could muster and starts pushing my attack back. Sage damn, that hurt like a bitch. Focusing back on the battle I notice my key wave has been pushed back a lot, angry at getting sneak attacked I release all my extra power. Pushing his attack back even faster than before, Cold gets flustered and before he can even move, my attack reaches him. His body slowly disintegrates from my attack, I continue my attack until I don't sense any more life. Stoping my attack I look at where he once was, only to find ashes there instead. Sighing I look around for the moon before flying there slowly. Sage ha, all that fighting made me hungry. Finally arriving at the damaged moon after a few hours of flight, I fly to the spaceship. Walking into the airlock, I let it do its job, and then I walk to the kitchen to eat. Grabbing whatever I can find, I start devouring everything. While eating, I examine my injuries. Sage a few broken bones, a broken nose, a couple of muscle tears. Hmm, not that bad, it should all be healed after a good night's rest. While I'm eating, I suddenly see two people appear across from me, looking at them I realize who they are. Sage, Dash Supreme Kai, and his apprentice Kibito. So you were the people spying on my fight. The moment I said that, they both had a look of surprise on their face. It took a while for them to calm back down and start a conversation with me. Shin, Dash it seems an introduction is not necessary. May I know your name? Sage, Dash Mf. My name's Sage, a scion. Seeing as you guys showed yourselves, you must want something from me, so what is it? Hearing my nonchalant answer must have made Kibito angry, as he started talking to me like he was above me. Kibit dash, that is not how you should behave, before a supreme, Kai mortal. Looking over at him while still eating, I am amused by his foolish response. Even after witnessing my power he still dares to think he is above me. Sage it's common knowledge that Kibito looks down on mortals, but he shouldn't be stupid. Smirking I stand up and start walking to Kibito, while slowly powering back up. 
Standing in front of him with almost my full power being released, I can see sweat all over his body. Sage, Dash did you think just because I'm injured that I can't fight? Because I love a good battle. Shin, Dash S Sage, please do forgive him, this is his first time interacting with mortals. Sage, Dash humph, whatever. Anyways, what do you need me with? Walking back to my seat, I continue eating while listening to Shin speak about something I'm familiar with. Shin, Dash, have you heard of the terror of the universe, Mage and Bio? Sage, Dash, yeah, I know who you're talking about, big fat pink creature, and I'm going to assume you want me to help you defeat that creature? Shin, Dash, why yes, I have used some artifact to look into the future and I know that he will come back soon. So I was hoping that I can ask for your help in protecting the universe from him. After he said that he looked at me pleadingly, hoping for my help. I didn't really plan to fight Bu, because by the time he is free from the seal I will have surpassed him massively. Still, I plan to go to Earth someday so might as well accept it. Sage, Dash sure, I will help you. But since you can see the future, why didn't you just find out where Mage and Bu is sealed and take him before he is ever released? Shin, Dash of course, I tried that but I don't know where he is sealed at, and whenever I try to find the one who is unsealing him I am always blocked from seeing anything. The person must be a great magic user. Finished eating, I was about to walk to my bed when I remembered I had two Kais who can teleport anywhere in the universe right next to me. Sage, Dash, hey since you guys are already here could you teleport me and the spaceship to the Galactic Patrol H.Q? Shin, Dash, sure. Kai Kai. We're here, anyways, I will leave you alone and I shall contact you when I get more information on Mage and Bio. And with that, they disappeared just as quickly as they appeared. Looking around, I walk outside of the spaceship and I'm in the H.Q, specifically the docking hangar. Sensing Nala's key, I make my way to her, ignoring everyone in the hangar. A few minutes later, I'm standing outside a door, knocking I wait a few seconds, before I see Nala open the door. Nala, dash ah. Sage are back, come hug, big sis. Saying that she opens her arms while giving me a teasing smile. Annoyed at her teasing, I walk up to her and reluctantly hug her. Sage HAA, why is she so annoying? But I did kinda miss her. Nala, dash, it seems someone missed me? Sage, dash, humph, no one missed you. Getting out of her hug, I walk inside her room and find a whole bunch of materials everywhere. Looking around, I notice what looks like experiments, or she is testing something. Sage, dash, what is all this Nala? Nala, dash, these are experiments, with my runes. While you were gone, I looked through everything that H.Q had on magic, and the stuff I found was amazing. The information was so far ahead of our species that I could barely understand it, it took me at least a week to understand some of the more basic magics. I haven't even started on the more advanced magics yet, I am almost there though. Looking at how excited she got talking about magic made me kinda nervous. Walking up to her, I notice she has bags under her eyes, and her hair seems disheveled. Sage, Dash, Nala, when was the last time you slept? Nala, Dash I don't know? What day is it? Sighing at her answer, I pick her up and walk to the bedroom, dropping her on the bed, I lay on the bed as well, hugging her from behind trying to stop her from escaping. Nala, Dash, let me go Sage, now is not the time for sleep, I need to experiment more. Sage, Dash, nope. I'm tired, and you're tired, so we are going to sleep. Besides you need some sleep, you look terrible. Ignoring her struggling and complaining, I drift to sleep while still hearing her annoying voice. Underscore, underscore, underscore. Underscore, underscore, underscore. Waking up, and as usual whenever me and Nala sleep in the same bed her entire body is on top of me. Turning my head to the left, I find Nala's beautiful face, sleeping peacefully, sighing, I start meditating knowing I won't be able to leave without waking her up. Sage I'm fully healed, and my power has increased by a lot, but sadly, the Zenkai wasn't that big. Anyways, back to controlling my power. A few hours later, I hear yawning, and I feel movement all over my body. Opening my eyes, I find Nala is no longer wrapped around me, she's slithering to the bathroom while yawning, but before she enters she turns around and looks at me. Nala, dash thanks Sage, it seems I got too caught up in my magic experiments. It's good I have you to worry about me. She sounded thankful in the first half, but I'm sure she was teasing me in her second sentence. Sage, dash TSK. Just go take a shower woman. Walking out of the room, I can hear Nala laughing while in the bathroom. Standing outside the door, I make my way to where I believe Maru should be. If you want to support me check out my Patreon at https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash kayashin. I tend to polls that decide important plot stuff in my p at trian.
Many thanks to my awesome patrons. Ben Phillips. Yami Tancho. Harold's Martinsons. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be here until next time.